Welcome to the Star Roundtable discussion on the budget. Uh, to meet me, to my left, is Mr. Ronnie Lim, country tax leader from Deloitte, Malaysia. To his left is Mr. Kenneth Lim, Ernst & Young, tax leader. Followed to his left is Mr. Lee Tuck Heng, PricewaterhouseCoopers Joint Assurance Leader. At the end of the table is Mr. Tai Lai Kok, Executive Director, KPMG Tax Services. Sanjar Bahad. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. We just heard the Prime Minister deliver his 2009 budget speech. Uh, there was a lot to digest, a lot was said. Uh, let me start off with the first question. I think for the man in the street, the main focus would be the reduction in personal income taxes. Uh, small little adjustment of 1% cut was announced. Is that a significant improvement in the disposable income of the Rakyat following the reduction in taxes? For the person who is on the top tax rate, the reduction is 150 ringgit uh, per year. And so that, that's the extent of the reduction for a top tax payer okay. at 250,000 income. Okay. Right. Yeah, and, and there are a variety of small little changes that uh, by itself may not add up to a lot, but uh, you know, the, the, aside from direct tax changes, th there would be other forms of uh, encouragement, as in uh, the reliefs, that are, not the, the rebates and the grants that are given for people of a low income level or the hardcore poor. So there are, in addition to the small changes in the direct tax, also an element of of uh, a social net, a social safety net that's being devised to cover especially the hardcore poor. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> but uh, I think in addition to just, just uh, uh, deductions in terms of reduction tax rates, uh, there are other incentives like uh, you know, travel allowance, for example, uh, where now you know, travel allowance is given by the employer to the employee, it will both be exempt you know, in the hands of the employee. And I think that will probably make the, the, a, a great difference rather than just the, the tax deductions in the rates. Okay. I find the uh, I find the proposals to be very interesting in the sense that uh, uh, I think quite a lot of thought has has gone in and in so far as personal income taxes are concerned, they have taken the, the the decision to take a cut there, and then of course in so far as the welfare of the hardcore poor, they've increased the uh, limits in so far or rather the criteria, uh, re reduced the criteria in so far as uh, qualifying families are concerned. They've given the uh, breaks in so far as uh, the working class are concerned, you know, with reductions in so far, ex exemptions in so far as benefits. So, yeah, quite quite a bit, uh, bit of bits and pieces everywhere, I would see. Okay, okay. Yeah. can just come in here. I see this as quite an uh, employee-friendly budget. Okay. Uh, relative to the budgets of recent years, yes. there were a host of uh, uh, goodies for the man in the street. Okay, so this time around is most more focused on the individual rather than the big company, the big corporation itself. Yeah, I, mean, yes. I think the government has definitely <coughs> recognised the fact that uh, everybody is uh, suffering uh, from uh, increased prices lately. So, yeah. which, is, which is interesting because if you look at the budget, there's really no <coughs> increased taxes for businesses per se. You know? so, so I think you're quite right to say that th there's a very careful strategy not to burden the businesses uh, anymore. Uh, in this current difficult situation and in fact there's some encouragement uh, towards easing some of the compliance proces processes as well as in the reporting of you know benefits in kind uh, these are now made very easy in the sense that they have exempted uh, the recipients from from being taxed and therefore would solve the problem of reporting and keeping track with small items okay. of, uh, of uh, what they call benefits which are Really, the cost of monitoring it, you know, is much, much bigger than uh, the revenue that, that, that is at stake. So, this is a very good move towards making it more business friendly okay. in terms of compliance. Yeah, and, and I think the, uh, by allowing, if like, employers to deduct now more incentives that they give to, to employees, I think, again, it's a move by the government to, if you like, encourage employers to think about, you know, ways that they can benefit the employees rather than just through the paycheck. All right. right, and and I think and to, and to allow deductions. I think, for example, now allowing in terms of even maternity, you know, expenses has a deduction. I think that's a big move, and I think it's a, it's a, it's it's great that and and uh, you know it's certainly in line with what we said. You know, this year's budget is certainly focused on the men industry. Okay, 
John Dave, uh, uh, we talked about increasing disposable income, but there was an aspect of budget which stretches the disposable income because uh, lots of uh, indirect taxes on imported goods have been reduced. Mm. Consumer yeah. goods, food stuff, and so that will enable the, the ringgit to be stretched. To be stretched no. mm -hmm. I think there was a whole list of just not food, but you know, electrical appliances and other products itself that That's either has been eliminated in terms of taxes and duties or reduced. Uh, but you know, in terms of the big number, the big ticket item, and so you, nobody can look beyond the measures in announced for public transport. Uh, is that a right move <coughs> done by the government uh, in terms of uh, pumping money, developing the public transport infrastructure, especially in the Klang Valley? Mm -hmm. And would what they have announced help alleviate or address some of the weaknesses in the system? It's certainly good to promote public transport and uh, the, the gov government has chosen to promote the uh, buses and trains, including the LRT. Um, but I think we need to strike at the very root. And the root is the price of oil. Okay. And unless we can move towards alternative sources of fuel, then the high cost of transportation will still be there. We alleviate it a little through public transportation, but if we strike at the very root, that would be better. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm imp impressed with the amount of allocation towards improving the public transportation system, and truly, you know, one would think this is a real uh, useful uh, strategy in the f in view of, well, partly as Ronnie quite said, quite rightly said, petrol price increases. Uh, to encourage people to actually use public pr transportation as a means of uh, getting around, particularly in the cities like Kuala Lumpur, Penang. Uh, I'm very encouraged by it, by the extent of uh, uh, allocation towards this area, and particularly in trying to improve upon uh, you know, the commuter trains and the, and the light transit, because it, until that is done, the dependence on driving and hands on uh, fuel you know, would would be very high, and 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 you know if if, if the system is is more efficient uh, as the allocation is intended to to do to to improve upon it, enhance it, then perhaps the average person who you know who, who ordinarily would commute might be swayed towards going towards a public transportation uh, option. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think the <coughs> excuse me the allocation of thirty five billion. I think. As uh, Kenneth has in indicated, it is impressive, but I wish that the 35 million or the 35 billion that they've been allocated is not just to build new infrastructure, but also think of how we're going to integrate the various transportation system. Okay. I think one of the greatest hindrances of using public transportation, especially in KL these days, is the lack of integration. That you you come out from a, a LRT station, then you know there's no taxis, and you know you're in the middle of nowhere. I think if we will spend some of that money, I think, to integrate the existing infrastructure, I think that would be great. So I think this is where the, uh, what is known as the Public Land Transportation Commission mm -hmm. that has been mentioned uh, in the budget to coordinate and to plan the various activities. I think that's a very, very important step. Because okay. I think, you know, as I said, a central coordination, a one-stop agency, I think you know, it's, it's not just putting more infrastructure. Okay. Well, hopefully, maintenance will also be a major part of the plan and uh, uh, as, as everybody has, has mentioned, yeah, fantastic uh, allocations. Uh, we hope it follows through all the way to implementation, maintenance, you know, otherwise, you know, people will still give up on the system, you know, okay. however much money you put in it. All right. Um, looks like it's about time that we take a short break right now, um, but we'll be right back with more. Thank you.